Hello, my name's Mary Gibson. I'm the author of seven published novels, all set during the first half of the 20th century in Bermondsey, South East London, where I was born and brought up. Now the inspiration for my latest book, The Bermondsey Bookshop, actually came 10 years ago when I was researching my first novel, Custard Tarts and Broken Hearts. I came across a photo of a quaint little bookshop in Bermondsey Street taken in 1921. And at first I was envious because growing up in Bermondsey, I'd always longed for a bookshop, which we never had. Then I became intrigued because I discovered that the bookshop had been famous, attracting literary figures to give lectures there, and also had it even published its own international quarterly. So I determined that one day I would include it in one of my novels. And that's the thing about inspiration. It's very long lived because that opportunity didn't come until now. For many years, I wrote short stories, um, slice of life so, sorts of things without much success. Um, I didn't even think I could complete a novel, but I do remember the time when the inspiration for my series of Bermondsey novels came. It was in the 1980s. Uh, my parents were being interviewed by some academics who were studying how to create communities in the modern world. But all that my parents could tell them was that growing up in Bermondsey between the wars and during the wars had been very, very tough. Um, and the things that had actually made life most miserable in some ways, the extreme poverty, high death rates, hard labour, and unsanitary conditions, these were the things that had drawn people together and forged the community spirit. So 20 years later, after my parents had both passed away, I was looking through their archive of um, scrapbooks and video diaries that they'd left. And I realised that here were those stories of courage and resilience that I'd once thought would, should be preserved. Here were the story ideas, but the inspiration had come much, much earlier, when I wasn't even looking for it. I'm often asked as a writer, where do you find your ideas from? Or what inspired your books? As if story ideas and inspiration were the same thing. But I don't think they are. I think they're quite different. And if story ideas are thoughts, then inspiration is more of an emotion or an impulse. On this website or in writing magazine, you can find very valuable techniques for drumming up story ideas, but I'm not sure that inspiration can be conjured in quite the same way. Now, the other day I was looking out of my kitchen window, watching some sparrows bumbling around, looking obviously looking for a feeder that was no longer there because the branch that had held it had snapped and I'd moved the feeder across the garden. The goldfinches had found the new feeding station straight away, but the sparrows were launching themselves into empty space and I wanted to tell them, look the other way, it's over there. And I suppose for writers struggling with inspiration at this difficult time, my advice would be the same. Look in another direction. Don't look for inspiration. Find something that you can immerse yourself in or absorb yourself in. Um, perhaps you've revived a hobby or perhaps you're taking more walks and have noticed all those nameless wildflowers growing in the verges. Perhaps you're researching your family tree or perhaps you're just watching the birds. Whatever it is, um, my advice, if you're searching for inspiration, is be more of a goldfinch than a sparrow and look the other way.